Hey, I'm Johnny Scoville, and this is Chase the Eat. Got a very big day today. It's going to be a packed video. And man, I hope whatever you're doing today, it's amazing. Um, we're starting it off with a little cup of coffee. We're doing our first clinic today in Tucson for Harvest 912. Sport the new Harvest 912 gear. Couldn't be happier. I'm very, very excited. I want to thank, listen, Faith and Carrie and Kit and Chad and everybody in the Tucson chapter of Harvest 912 who's helped. You know, just uh, there's so many people, but thank you, everybody that's helped. Um, okay, Blunt. Man, I'll tell you what, smoking Blunt hot sauce. I'm a fan. I really, really am a fan. This is the one that got me hooked on their sauce. And this is their original, smoking Blunt original. Man, oh man. Wait just a second, I'm gonna tell you what's in this thing. The label's a little on the small side. So we got onions, carrots, le lemons, jalapenos, pepperoncini, season mix. It's a simplistic sauce, but the reason I fell in love with this sauce, as you might be able to tell by the ingredients, <coughs> it's got the pepperoncini in there, and that's the, uh, I'm having asthma issues this morning, people, but pepperoncini is what got me into peppers. And my dad turned me on to them when I was a little boy, so the, that's kind of what got me hooked on the original sauce from Smoking Blood. So big shout out to them this morning. Yes. All right, so, um, if you've never had smoke and blood sauces, you need to try them. One thing that's really great about them is they now come in these really great bottles that just make you want to go out and get a tattoo. Boy, you know what? It's been a cool minute, hasn't it? I think I need some ink. Maybe that's what I need. I have some stuff I've been wanting to do, so. All right. You know what? Let's do the aroma test here. Here's the pour. Now, so if you're, you know, you heard me say pepperoncini, you can see the influence of the color almost, but you're thinking, does it smell like it? Yeah, you can get that. I mean, it really is. This is like an homage to pepperoncini. This is really a neat sauce. Smoking blunt hot sauce. If you have not, if you don't know this company, you need to. This is Chasey. What's beautiful about this is it's bright. Do you guys know what I mean by that? Got a very bright flavor. It pops. The funny thing about a smoke and blunt hot sauce, he has a lot of varieties. I think that one might be my favorite. Um, it's such a good one. It really is. If you like pepperoncini, you'll really like this. Um, the heat on it, it's relatively mild. So it's kind of, if you're a new chili head, this is still doable, okay? It'd be warm. But it'd be still doable if you're it's a medium heat mild to medium heat sauce if you're a chili head but really it's a great one it's the uh you know what did a video yesterday about a gateway sauce and the gateway pepper and the gateway products this is could be your gateway sauce this is a it's certainly a great gateway to smoking blunt hot sauce so if you haven't tried it yet boy it's a good starting point the original you will love it <clears throat> And it's very, very uh, um, versatile. Um, it'd be great. You know what would be great? It would be great as a salad dressing. So, like, what I do, I've been doing this for years. Like, I'm telling you this for the... I'm trying to think about this. Yeah, I don't think I've purchased any salad dressing since I started my channel. What I do is when I get a bottle that's kind of low, I'll throw a little balsamic vinegar in it, shake up, and use that as a salad dressing. This would be just decadent as a salad dressing that way. All right, so now, 
We've been talking about some of the greatest albums the highest grossing albums in music history <clears throat> next up <clears throat> one of my favorite albums one of the greatest album covers and just what a band rumors by Fleetwood Mac 1977 20 million copies sold by the time Rumors came out, Fleetwood Mac was a much different sounding and looking band than in the early days of the 60s. Back then, it was a guitar-driven, blues-fueled outfit that never seemed to achieve its uh, just credit. Uh, so it was the band's 11th album. You imagine that, you're chugging along, you keep doing your thing, you don't care what other people say, your 11th album. Rumors. It's the second album with Lindsey Buckingham, who's a monster, and Stevie Nicks uh, in tow. And that, um, that sent Fleetwood Mac towards mainstream rock superstardom. The demise of the rock power cu um, couple's relationship provided um, some emotionally charged classics, such as Go Your Own Way, The Chain, Rumors won a Grammy, and remains one of the most celebrated, influential rock records of all time, no doubt. No doubt. You want to hear something funny about this band? And a lot of people know this. Great. Go, listen, there's some great specials about uh, about Fleetwood Mac online, and you can see the making of some of those stuff. But they didn't. They were best when everybody was clashing. Like there was a couple. There's a. I can't remember which uh, documentary I saw, but like there was a there's a, a, a time of the band's life where everybody was sort of sleeping with everybody. And, but no one was like upfront about it. So, and you would think, one would think that all that tension and all that just, all that emotion, right? Could be devastating and just destroy a band. Fleetwood Mac was at their best when everything was like, like, I can't believe what's going on. They were so good. What a great band. What a band. All right. Cracked Rear View. Oh, what a great album this was. Uh, this is more modern than some of the other stuff that we've been talking about. Like, all the stuff we've been talking about, 70s and stuff. 94, Hootie and the Blowfish. 21 million copies. Is Hootie alternative rock? or purveyors of straight up rock and roll meant to be played in a bar while drinking with your buddies. Well, regardless, the band knocked it, it out of the park with cracked rear view. Hootie and the Blowfish debuted sat atop the Billboard's 200 on five occasions. Thanks to top 10 singles, Hold My Hand. Wow. Only Want to Be With You, Let Her Cry. In the grand scheme of things, the band could never truly duplicate the success of Cracked Rear, View, uh, Cracked Rear View, but this album remains a special part of the 90s pop culture. Here's the thing about Cracked uh, Rear View. And again, uh, please know that this is merely my opinion, but here's my opinion. They were too positive. It doesn't float today. They talked about love and happiness, holding the girl's hand. They were great. I love them. But I thought they were great. Now, uh, I came up the lead singer. He's now country singer. For real. All right. Next up. One of the great, one of my favorite, personal favorites. All of these are my personal favorites, really. But The Wall by Pink Floyd. 1979. 23 million copies. And this is 23 million copies when there was no internet, you guys. It just spread like a fungus, man. Listen to this. Pink Floyd has long been considered a progressive and conceptional rock band, but this album was especially bombastic and grandiose regarding production content and animosity within the process. The semi-autobiographical -autobiog work of bassist Roger Waters, um, alerted listeners that we don't need no education. While dealing with personal loss and the growing disdain for rock stardom to the point of reinventing oneself, The Wall uh, houses Floyd's classic like Comfortably Numb, Run Like Hell, and Hey You. Not to, men not to mention underrated uh, gems like Mother, Nobody Home. I underrated? They don't have anything underrated. That is, that's ridiculous. Fellow British musician Bob Geldof played the lead role in the movie version. Man. 
the wall. Holy moly. All right, so I've got uh, two more to go, and then we're going to stop for today. The wall. That was one of those... That was one of those, like... I don't know. I, 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 I had to assume it's like this for everybody, but that was one of those earth-shattering albums that just kind of changed you. That changed me. That changed me. That was... Anyway... The next one, one of my absolute all-time favorite uh, musicians and entertainers is Billy Joel. Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And this is in 1985. 23 million copies. The Piano Man's Best. From 73 to 85. It's truly, it truly is the definitive collection of Billy Joel classics and an ideal place for new listeners to be introduced to one of the greatest singer-songwriters of all time. In addition to standout favorites like Only the Good Die Young, She's Always a Woman, My Life, Uptown Girl, the album includes two previously unreleased tracks, You're Only Human, uh, Second Wind, and the, the Night is Still Young. It came out in the mid-80s when Joel was reaching a new uh, generation of fans who have since passed down his music to the next generation. Huge uh, Billy Joel fan. Billy Joel, man. I've seen him with Tommy a few times. Uh, wow, Billy Joel. Whew. All right, this is the last one for today. And, and one more time up, the Beatles. All right, so the Beatles. Um, we're not done with the Beatles. It says the White Album is hodgepodge. And this is from 1968, 24 million copies. The White Album is a hodgepodge of musical stylings and genre, folk, ska, avant-garde, to name a few. It wasn't an easy album for the band to make, and its breakup would soon follow. However, there is plenty of greatness to be found in the legendary double album. Blackbird, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, Back in the USSR, Obla Deal Blada, Dear Prudence, um, Helter Skelter, Revolution 1 and 9. Ugh, Revol number 9? Number nine, number nine. And uh, those uh, just dent the surface. The White Album is not for everybody, whatever. It's for everybody. Uh, and plenty of diehard Beatles fans can't stomach the project, whatever. Uh, it didn't dim the Fab Four's legacy. I, I don't know how you could even say that. It's one of the great albums of all time. For real. Wow, the White Album. There's some stuff on there. Everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, asthma is finally breaking up. Everybody who's a, been a, a fan of music, if you're, especially if you're my age, <laughs> the White Album was like, it did something to you. When you listen to it, I remember the first time I listened to uh, the White Album, I remember just thinking, no, it's just a, you know, it was just an experimental, really crazy, just all over the place kind of album. Man, the White Album. Such a Beatles fan. All right, uh, and my daughters, my kids love the Beatles. I think it's really important to pass, you know, good music on. My, I, that was a really cool thing that my mom and dad did. I remember when I, Tommy and I were kids. I, I'm not even sure if Tommy was around yet. Yeah, he was. He was probably like three. He was a little boy. And I remember going through a closet that just it was a closet it was a house you're exploring your house and i found all these albums and i, I man i found like the mamas and the papas hendrix the who and all these are really amazing stuff that my my mom and dad like janice Joplin. i remember the first time i saw a janice joplin album that my mom and dad I thought at the time i thought it just looked weird, but I remember later on going, wow, how cool my mom and dad were. I don't know, because you go through this, I think everybody goes through a stage where you think your mom and dad are the most uncool people on the face of the earth, you know what I mean? But, uh, man, I have cool parents. My dad was the coolest. All right, we're wrapping it up right now. I got such a really great day today. I don't think we're going to be able to, I don't know, I don't know. Probably won't be able to film out there, you know, but I'm going to talk about it later. So listen, make it a great day. Tell somebody you love them. In the description box, you're going to see Smoking Blunt. 
hot sauce. Really great hot sauce. This is one of my favorites. It's the original that got me hooked on this sauce company. Please try it. Get a bottle of this. Try some of his other sauces. There's such a wide variety of sauce of flavor profiles. To, and I mean stuff from street tacos to ice cream. There's stuff, you name it, there's something for you. So please check it out in the description box. Right there is my son, Johnny Scoville Jr., a literal rock star. Guy's amazing. Right there is my brother, Tommy Scoville. Right here, all the challenges I've ever done. Pepperology here. Tell somebody you love them today. I love you. I'm Johnny Scoville. This was Chase the Eat.